Hey guys, it's Andre from the High Performance Academy. We're here with Matt from Hot Rod Conspiracy, and we've got one of the most uh, interesting vehicles I've seen here at SEMA. I don't even know if we can call it a car. What is this, Matt? It's a bike. It's got two wheels, therefore it's a bike. No, that's really a pretty good explanation. Okay, so we're looking at a bike. It's not like any bike I've ever seen before. You obviously build it for uh, top speed competition, so what are you trying to achieve with this bike? Yeah, that's right. It's, it's a a bike that's built for Bonneville and the overall record right now is 376 miles an hour and that's what we're after. So you're planning to do 376 miles an hour in this thing on two wheels on the salt flats? Well the record is 376 and I've got three competitors that have been after it for about 20 years and they keep bumping it up so we're shooting for 400 because we know by the time we get it tuned and ready to go it's likely going to be a, a higher record than that. So 400 Obviously, as you're uh, starting to increase the speed, it becomes exponentially more difficult to go faster. You need more and more power. What sort of power are you, are you producing out of this bike? Yeah, that's right. So for this bike, really, it's the unlimited class of bikes. But being unlimited, it's still uh, restricted to three liters displacement. So we have two 1,500cc Triumph rocket engines. It's a 2300cc three-cylinder engine stock, and we've got D-stroked cranks that, that, that back that off to 1500cc's. And it's turbocharged, about 25 PSI a boost, and MoTeC controlled, and that's how we get 500 horsepower from each of them for a combined 1,000 horsepower. So 1,000 horsepower in total from the two engines. What are you doing to connect those two engines together? That's quite an unusual setup, having twin engines. Yeah, so. So this is an inline three and it's longitudinally mounted in a bike. The nice thing about this Triumph rocket engine is it's very beefy. Uh, it doesn't have to be, it's, it's built to compete in the Harley segment generally, they're a cruiser, but uh, Triumph, their engineering is really second to none. So it's got four valve heads, you know, twin overhead cams. It's got a dry sump oiling system and it's got a really nice bottom end so we've got an advantage over these sport bike guys that take a 1300 cc sport bike engine and then jack it up to the 1500 cc's and just hope that it won't explode you know we got bearings and we've got uh we've got some mass there to take it do you run a um a transmission at all on the vehicle so we use the five-speed transmissions on each engine, and we shift them uh, together simultaneously. And then there is a, uh, a two-gear transmission out of the back of each of those. So it puts them on a common drive shaft that's above the transmission. So basically it moves the, it uh, reverses the rotation, uh, moves the drive shaft out of the first engine above the second engine. Then there's a similar gearbox on the second engine that put them on a common shaft and then goes back to the shaft drive. It's a pretty novel and complicated system there. Um, with the twin transmissions, obviously shifting both of those at the same time is, is pretty critical. How are you achieving that? Is it mechanical or is it electronic? Actually, that's not difficult. It's an electric shifter, and we've got the MoTeC engine controllers on there. Uh, we've got an ADL3 dash with the M400 engine controllers. They're all synced up. Um, they sh there's a, a master M400 and a slave M400, and we tell, you know, through an electronic control, we tell the M400 we want to shift. It backs off the throttle and then engages an electric shifter, and it puts it into the next gear, and, and off we go. So that's not one of the terribly difficult things to do, and it's all because the MoTeC controllers are really flexible and able to do whatever we want them to do. Okay, cool. So talking about having twin MoTeC M400 ECUs on there, is uh, synchronizing the power output of the two engines, is that, is that a challenge? Is that difficult or is that not even something you really need to worry about? I've got, a good, I've got good support from MoTeC East and you know they do that for us, so I tell them what I want done and it happens. So whether it's difficult or not, I don't know. They tell me it's not difficult and it happens, so that's really what I see. So you're leaving the, the tuning of the, the system itself to MoTeC? Yeah. Bob Carpenter from New Jersey, he built the engines. So MoTeC and he, they do the tuning on the, on the dyno. But really, MoTeC is responsible for syncing the engines together. OK, so you've got 1,000 horsepower here from these two engines running, you said, 25 PSI of, of boost pressure. How, how much of a challenge is it to get that 1,000 horsepower down to the salt flats through just one drive wheel? Well, that's not challenging either. I mean, 
just because the MoTeC, we've got traction control on it, so it only allows enough to, to go to the salt. But really, the thing people don't realize about the salt is that the traction coefficient is around 0.6, so it's not quite what asphalt would be. Um, to go fast, you know, you have to have a lot of weight on the front wheel, so and it's very low, so there's no weight transfer. So we really can't accelerate faster than about 0.3 or so Gs, depending on the salt conditions, at, at any speed. So we don't use that 1,000 horsepower until we're going 325, 350 miles an hour because you simply can't put it to the ground. But that's what you need it for. You know, the record is 376. You can go 325 with, you know, 300 horsepower, but to get up to 400, that's where you need to continue to accelerate. Once you hit three and a quarter and 350 and 375, you have to still pull hard, which is when you use that 1,000 horsepower. So it's interesting that even at 320 plus mile an hour, the, the uh, bike is still basically traction limited due to the yep. salt flat. Absolutely. Okay, so it's a it's a really novel bike. Obviously, you're you're aiming for a world record, so the technology you've put into here is, is pretty groundbreaking. Could you tell us what you look as the biggest single challenge in, in trying to break that record? Um, you know, the single challenge really at Bonneville is the weather and the conditions. We went this year to just test, for example, and we wanted to do quite a bit more. Uh, generally, you know, with some exceptions, you can be on the salt, you know, middle of July through the middle of October. So there's really two months that, or three months that you could count on getting some work done. Uh, we went out there in the middle of August and uh, at the bub meet and it rained out halfway through. So since the end of August this year, it's been underwater and it won't come up till mid-July next year. So that, you know, and during the week that we were there, there were you know, rainstorms and windstorms and all kinds of things. And with a streamliner, you have to have a very low wind condition and there's usually wind out there. So the challenge is just waiting for the right conditions. That's the single largest. And then, you know, look at the bike. Everything is custom. Uh, there's so, everything is custom designed, but you know, we designed it for perfect conditions and you just have to have the perfect conditions to run. Okay, so at Bonneville, altitude's uh, also a little bit of an issue. You've got low air density, so that makes it a little bit more difficult to, to make power. Um, obviously, you've got turbochargers that will, will help with that. What, uh, what are you l using in the way of data logging to help uh, tune the, the bike at the salt flats? So we've got the ADL3 and, and some expansion modules, and we're looking at about 40 channels of data. So, uh, you know, we get everything you can think of, all the engine parameters, temperatures from everywhere, tire temperatures, um, suspension position, steering position, um, lots of different things to tell us what it's doing, and, and then we can try and figure out if there are issues, what we can do to make them better. And that data is really critical, that's key to uh, improving the bike between runs and, and making it go faster? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you, if you go to Bonneville, people are there for decades before they really do anything. And it's, it's kind of an old school sport in a lot of ways, where people have been doing it the same way for 20 or 30 years. You see a lot of tube chassis out there and, you know, traditional bodies on them. A lot of the, the bikes and cars that are out there have been out there for decades and they're still competitive. We took a little different approach. We've got a fully monocoque carbon fiber, uh, you know, chassis body. Um, we didn't want to be particularly high tech for that, but we wanted to be safe. And the thing about these bikes is when they go over at speed, you know, they tend to slide around and then maybe a panel will blow off and, or come off or get scraped off and then there's sharp edges and they dig in and you start to tumble and bad things happen. So we started out with this carbon monocoque that's really the structure itself, so it won't compromise, it'll be safe. I mean, we want to be safe for sure, but you know, the technology starts with the chassis. We did some simulation with CFD on the aero, with the chassis stability, finite element, so it's really some race car technology applied to you know, what doesn't ordinarily get that. And then it just continues to the engine controllers and all of the, you know, the best of, of those types of things. Well, you've certainly built a bike like uh, no other bike I've ever seen, and uh, we wish you all the best for breaking that 400 mile an hour barrier when you get back to the salt flats. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Cheers. For online tuning courses, visit learntotune.com.